I want to know how the Braille Challenge has helped you prepare for your future. And after you share that, if you had to sum all of this amazing information that you've given tonight up into one tip or piece of advice for future Braille Challenge participants, how would you sum that up into maybe a sentence? Um, I suppose I can go first on this one. Um, so I think that the um, I think that it's been you know a great thing for me overall, just because it's really pushed me to improve my literacy over the years, which is great for my future. You know, I started uh, started out when I was younger at the uh, Southwest Missouri Regional, uh, which doesn't even exist anymore. And uh, I was I was not very good. I'm not gonna lie. We uh, there were there were very few of us there, and I was definitely towards the bottom. Um, and so just kind of having this this opportunity for growth over the years and kind of, you know, there's always someone that's better, that's just a little bit better than you and someone who can, you know, help push you to get even better. And I think that that's something that's like invaluable because, you know, it's really helped me become a better reader and better writer. And it's been just such a great thing for me just overall. And then I think if I have to sum up all of the stuff, I think that it's just uh, for me, I think the biggest lesson that. Uh, I think I want more people to know that, that to some extent, you got to have a little fun with it also, you know, it is a, it is definitely a contest, but at the same time, this is, you also have the opportunity to meet so many people and make so many connections. And so just have a little fun with it while you're getting all of your um, excellent brailing skills in as well. The Braille Challenge helped me prepare for my future by improving my reading and writing skills. So I can feel ready and be prepared, uh, prepared for high school and college and whatever comes to me later. And one piece of advice that I would give to future Braille Challenge, challenge partic participants to help them be successful is to never give up, even if it seems very difficult. You know, like you stumbled on one question. All right, that's enough. That will make things even worse because... Braille Challenge is supposed to be fun, right? It, it, you're supposed to have fun with it, not, oh, man, it's too hard. I don't like it anymore. So that's one tip I would give to the, the, the new Braille Challenge participants. I would say um, that um, I think Braille Challenge has helped me just improve my literacy, literacy skills tremendously. I started in fourth grade, and... I wasn't the best Braille reader, and I feel like now, as a junior, I have tremendously improved, not just, like, with my reading skills, but my vocabulary, and I've expanded a lot more when it comes to reading and writing, and I think it's just because of that idea of Braille and learning as I go, and one piece of advice that I would give is to just do your best. You know, that's all you can do, and I think that it's important um, to note that you you know just to try hard and never give up and just to do your best and that that's it i mean you know i feel like everybody that competes will give it their all and will do well and i think it's very important to try hi everyone this is maddie um i really love what everyone was saying um in terms of how the braille challenge has helped me with my future um, every year that I go to a Braille Challenge Regional or a Braille Challenge Finals event or even during the virtual Braille Challenge with the different webinars, um, I've been introduced to so many wonderful blind role models, whether they be former Braille Challenge um, contestants or just successful blind people in general. And I learned so much from them about, you know, anything from like the small minutia of daily life, like strategies for doing laundry to like how to deal with ableism in the workplace, you know, should I get a guide dog, all these things that you might not be able to talk to people about in your daily life if you don't live around many blind people. But at every Braille Challenge event, there are people that are brimming with knowledge and want to share it with you um, and want to share their support. Um, and I think that's helped me both personally and professionally with going into music. Um, I've met so many blind musicians that have given me so much insight and so much information and encouragement. Um, like others were saying, I think one of the most important things to keep in mind when um, participating in anything Braille Challenge, um, one of the most important tips would be to use the people around you for support. Um, the Braille Challenge, it is a competition. 
But more than that, it's a community. Um, ultimately, the number that you might get announced as at the end of the Braille Challenge finals night or at the end of the Braille Challenge regionals night, um, it doesn't matter as much as the connections um, you make with your fellow contestants, with your peers, the friendships that you form, the experiences you get to have, um, and like the knowledge you get to gain from mentors um, and the long-term, you know, feeling of, yeah, I can do this. I can, I can do Braille. Um, I have friends who also can do Braille and we can um, enjoy it together. I think it's really important to, you know, revel in the community that you have access to and support each other and support yourselves. Braille Challenge, let me tell you, it has given me, I mean, I've always been really competitive, but like, bro, ever since Braille Challenge, I've just like been able to work hard for stuff because, okay, so my... 2019, I went to nationals, did not place. 2020, that was the year, that was the first year it was virtual. I had a little meeting with myself. I'm like, what am I going to do to actually place this time? Well, I'm going to do practice and a lot of it. So I did practice that year. I got first place in the in my division at, at nationals. And it just shows the value in hard work. and you can apply this to anything. Like if I apply it to goalball in my, you know, goalball career, I'm always the youngest person on the court. I'm always, you know, and so I have to put in that much more extra work to be the best. You want to be the best. And if that means, you know, spending a couple hours throwing the ball, blocking, doing stuff that you might not want to do, doing stuff that might be hard, you're going to have to do that because it's going to all pay off. You know, it's going to you're, you're going to get better. And this isn't anything. And for any contestants that are going to do Braille Challenge or that have that need any advice, I would say you got to work hard for it. It's important. You have to put in the work. This is Brooke. Um, I think Braille Challenge has helped me because it's been a motivator for me to improve my Braille skills. Um, I think sometimes it can kind of feel like with Braille, because it's something I have to use um, since I can't reprint it all. Um, it's something that I kind of have to work at, so it's not as fun, but having Braille Challenge and having that competitive aspect has made me more motivated. Instead of feeling like I have to improve with Braille, I want to improve now. And I think that's really helpful um, for me. And then my main piece of advice for people um, in regards to Braille Challenge would probably be just to practice in the way and the amount that feels right for what they want to achieve. Like if your goal is to win, practice as much as you feel like you need to do that. But if your goal is just to go out there and have fun, practice as much as you want, just do whatever feels right for you.